to see uh, if he's doing okay and in the back of my mind I'm thinking about what uh, what might be the best way out but it gets to the point where I just I've got other people around me and I'm gonna let them uh, deal with uh, the best ways to get him out so I knew I had a crew up top thinking about how to get him out and then I knew I had a crew just inside the window um, working on that so uh, we, we kind of um, the window seemed to be working better and uh, after he started moving for me, it seemed to be the most optimal thing. Because it's going to be easier to take him down and out than try and lift him out of there um, with the equipment we had. Can you move your feet for me? Just wiggle them. Okay, good, 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 good. Pick up straight. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. What's this? That's him again. Okay. Try and keep your head nice and still, sir, okay? I'm going to lean against that. I'm going to turn you this way, Pete. I'm okay. Okay, now we're just going to get you checked out. Yeah. Hang on, just a second. I'm going to put this on your neck, okay? This is just going to try and protect your spine a little bit, okay? Just in case there's any injuries. You got a big cut on top of your head. What's bugging you? All right. I'm going to move this to a no neck real quick. Okay. Oh, it's not there? Yeah, All right. Any, where I'm pushing you, anything here? No. Okay, all right. Uh, make it up as you go. That's a nod of what our job is. Yeah, we learn a lot of stuff in the fire academy and paramedic school and stuff, but you just have to kind of play it by ear and see what's the safest way to help them and help us without hurting ourselves or hurting them anymore. Do you, you want another want, lifter you want in there? more people down there? I don't think there's room. I think we all, I'm okay. okay. You know, I don't know what they'll need. You got we two get, inside. Okay. I'll go inside. I know that was uncomfortable. Oh, thank you. Touching your feet. Uh -huh. Do you feel me touching your feet? Yeah. Which foot am I touching? The left. Okay, what foot am I touching? Right. Push down like a gas pedal. Yeah. Push down. The there you go, perfect. Please. Pull up. Please Pull up. Tacked. Good job, good job. Hey, you want to drive? Uh, Jules, I can teach Steve here. Yeah. Okay. You want a traumatic patient? Um, pressure everything's good. I'm going to call and ask them. Okay. All right. See what they say. Nice, easy three. Our biggest yeah. concern is. Um, you know, what injuries does he have? If he lost consciousness, if he's got some uh, injuries that are causing neural deficits. Uh, my biggest concern is blood pressure. A lot of our trauma activation criteria goes on mechanisms of injury, which he fit Thank that you. criteria for mechanism of injury um, by the distance of the fall and, and the position he was in. 
but uh, loss of consciousness. Um, we even look at the medications he's on. If he's on any blood thinners, that's going to be a huge trauma activation because if there's a bleed in the head or anywhere else, uh, I mean, he could, he could uh, have life, life threatening injuries in that sense. Hey, this is Greg Talk Metro Maker 13. Can you cut him? Right there is where he hurts his head. All right, we're going to get a route to this time. He's an eight year old that. male. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah, like three active. inches. Oh, yeah, but look, yeah, it looks like, like all the breathing stops. The so eight that's year old good. male fell about seven feet on his head into a window well. No loss of consciousness. Well, that's good. Some that's good. Back pain and I'm just getting in a little bandage up for you, okay? So we're going to come down like this. Heart rate to 77. It doesn't quite get any trauma activation, but. It was a pretty good fall under his head. So, uh, pressure 150 over 70, but I'm going to recheck it here in a second. If it's any different than that, I'll call you back. Okay, but uh, give us about 8 to 10. All right, see if you can blood pressure was really good, he was conscious, he was talking, kind of put it all together and thought, I'm going to ask the hospital if they want to activate. Because it involves trauma surgeons and x-ray, it brings a whole bunch of people into the ER. They didn't activate, so it got me a, extra, a couple extra nurses um, in, in the dock, and uh, that's kind of, and that worked out for us on this one. Anything else, Steve? sounds clear. He is alert and oriented. IV established by one. EKG. You want to do this TKO or? A uh, TKO is good, yeah. We got blankets on. Alright, there you are. I'm going to give you a little something for pain, okay? Okay, so. I've been around for a little while. I've had a few years as a paramedic, and I found out that 90% of what we do is actually talking to our patients, and uh, the other 10% are sticking the needles in and, and the oxygen and the blood pressure and everything like that. But 90% is to the make them comfortable and, uh, and relaxed because the less relaxed they are, the more stress on the body, um, uh, the, the, the more adrenaline they get going, the, the worse the condition can actually be. I, I found that if I can get a person smiling by the time they get to the hospital, it makes them realize that, okay, maybe it's not their day to, to die or to, to be critical. Um, and, and it gives them a thought that, hey, I can smile during this situation. and and uh, things are okay. It's different though. Yeah. You're in the call and then you gotta clean it up. We're doing our best, we've been trained. Uh, we don't know have all the answers, but we're sure gonna get them one way or another. Uh, we're gonna do everything we can to make them or their loved ones uh, you know, better. Um, we, we try hard, we, we're not always successful, so a lot of it's out of our hands. But uh, I, I want them to feel comfortable calling us. Uh, I want them to feel comfortable talking to us, not be afraid of us. Sure, we wear uniforms and stuff, but we're there to, uh, to help out and to make their day that much better. Try and make their chaotic world a little less chaotic. It, it's not all heroism and, and the stuff that you see on TV. Um, we have fun. Um, we, we, we cry together. We smile together. We eat together. But uh, in the end, it's all about, you know, personally, Find what's good, and this this job I, I hate to admit it, it's good for my ego. And uh, we've all got big egos, but but making somebody smile is big for big for my ego. Ego, making them uh, get to the hospital and thinking that you know, let them try to let them know that they're doing okay. That, that's good for my ego, and so it, that's kind of a selfish thing, but it, it's helped me through through many many years.
this firehouse at Station 21, we have two ambulances and one fire engine, as well as a brush truck. So in our firehouse, on our crew, my bid seat is the engine. Yet, I will spend one month on the engine, then I will spend a month on the ambulance before we rotate around. And all of the uh, three paramedics on our shift do the same thing, and we do the same thing with our EMTs. They work on the, all the different rigs for that versatility and working with different crews. Maybe leave room for the medic to get around you. Yeah, I might just have to kind of pull in there. Dispatch is 21. Engine 21. 21's on scene, two vehicle MVA, minor damage will be investigating. The role of a medic within the fire service, there are, I'm tasked with a number of different responsibilities, and that role can change depending on the call that I'm on and who else is going on that call. So the engine carries the identical equipment that the ambulance carries. Exactly the same stuff, the ambulance just carries more of it. So if need be, when we go to a medical call, if we're there first, or the ambulance is not available, or there's more patients than what the ambulance can handle on their own, we will support them to the greatest ability, and then we will deal with the continued medical needs um, as that scene evolves. At the same time, not only do we carry all the medical equipment, we carry all the fire equipment as well. So there are times where we might have to turn around and put out a fire and treat someone that was medically injured. Oh, thank you. So we're going to have you take a right, not necessarily follow the ambulance, but the next right into this parking lot over here. Okay. Cool, yeah, what's his number? He's going in the parking lot right there. Green electrical, heavy black smoke billowing from it. Which way? Engine 21, Left. smoke investigation outside, map page N28, C, at, we're yeah, we're good. 7620, East Harvard Avenue. Engine 21, smoke investigation outside. So take this to Harvard, and a left on Harvard. Engine 21, dispatch. Engine 21. Engine 21. Go straight. We'll be on the right side, like third right. We're going to be a green electrical box on the south side of the apartment complex. He's advising there's some black smoke coming from it. Flame scene at this time. Do you see anything over there? There you go. He contacted hey, Excel about that electrical. Yeah, so the concern being that we see this smoke coming out, and is it coming from an electrical box? Is it coming from the building? Did someone light a fire back here, such as possibly the homeless? Or do we have a fire extension coming from the uh, complex itself? In this case, it's a dryer vent, and that's why we look for extension inside. Once we determine that there's no hazard, then uh, we picked up Excel Energy, so they don't need to come out and shut down the electrical box. We picked up all other incoming units. Um, and we'll talk to the RP or the reporting party to make sure that they're aware of what the circumstances are, make sure that they're not still concerned. Um, then we'll be able to pick up and go back in service. Yeah, so we have wet clothes in the dryer as they're gonna uh, dry. The heat from the dryer tumbler itself is gonna create steam within that. Uh, it goes through an exhaust vent that leads to an exterior of a building. All residents and all, in this case, uh, our apartment complex would have that capability. It's gonna come out and it looks like smoke especially when you have a colder temperature and people see that rising up. In this case, the dryer vent is behind a bush and an electrical box. So to be safe, we didn't want to breathe the fumes not knowing if it was the dryer vent or an electrical box. So until we're masked up, that's why we stayed away from it um, and check for extension. But it's a very, very common call where we will get where someone calls in for a dryer vent or someone fires up a car on a cold day and the exhaust from that, um, people will think that there's a fire nearby. Yeah, totally. Stand by in the area. Map page. Report is 
yeah, infection, swelling, uh... Especially this time right now, everyone's getting sick and stuff. Yeah, and exactly. Airway stuff. I'm trying to think of what's the other yeah, thing, uh, dispatch. like just acute angioedema if they were like um, ACE inhibitors? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the symptoms this guy was experiencing, he'd already been seen and treated for in the hospital. So he was diagnosed about a week and a half prior to this 911 call today. Um, was admitted into the hospital and then discharged home, uh, was on antibiotics, was basically doing everything um, in his power and what was in his wheelhouse, you know, following all the instructions and directions that were given to him by his medical providers. Um, and then absolutely just some noticing some increasing symptoms that were getting a little bit worse, um, made the call to call Dispatch Health and on their assessment they okay. recognized that this was probably a more severe or significant uh, situation that warranted him uh, getting transported back to the emergency department as this was a little bit more critical. Dispatch Health is essentially a company that has different medical providers of different scopes um, where they are able to come to your home and provide you with an assessment. Some can even do blood work and uh, run some tests for you as well as start some interventions like giving you an IV or uh, giving you some fluids. Um, I think a lot of them can do testing as well such as you know flu and COVID testing. Um, I'm not 100% certain on all of their capabilities but it is a home service like of health rather than of health care providers tomorrow. rather than you having to make an appointment with a doctor if for whatever reason you don't have transportation available at your home or someone that's able to get you to the hospital or to a primary care provider it's a really great avenue that uh, individuals that is accessible to the public um, that you can call and have someone come and assess you and evaluate you in your own home if you find your symptoms to not seem extremely critical but more of an a discomfort that you're experiencing um, but you don't feel like you're in imminent danger your life is on the line of you potentially dying or um, having a very severe traumatic injury uh, those outlets are you know there for a reason and absolutely should be utilized and they are medical professionals as well and if they believe that you d require you know additional imaging or if you need additional interventions or medications or further assessment they can call 911 they can upgrade the call meet the criteria you do meet our sepsis alert criteria so we'll that be running the hospital stuff, just so they get the process started pretty quick when we get to the ERs all yeah. just, just help your body fight that yeah you need some heavy hitter antibiotics on board and some Hundred point eight. If something is very concerning to you, it's just as concerning to us. Usually if they believe in their own professional assessment that you require further care, then they will likely not want you to drive there yourself unless you have a safe ride, especially if it's a critical thing, that being an airway changes uh, regarding your electrical conductivity of your heart that are concerning or life-threatening um, neuro or neuro, neurologic changes that would be concerning for strokes they they're gonna call us and then we will get there and it will get escalated that way so it's a great jumping point especially for kind of the run-of-the-mill you know cold common cold symptoms um, ankle sprains small musculoskeletal injuries um, but anything advanced past that they will call us Let's see if I can't get one here and Look over on this side too. Sure. Fluids usually make a big difference to starting this process. So. One, two, three, poke. There we go. We're good. You want another one on the side? Uh, sure. Uh, actually, no. Okay. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let them do it for yep. their bloods. Yep. Yep. Please, thank you. Got it. Line All right, pressure here just so I don't bloodlet you anywhere. Sorry's been a rough go here recently. That is not good timing when your uh, throat's all swollen up on you and you can't talk. All right, thank you. Perfect. 
All right, so we're just going to take a nice easy ride over to Sky Ridge, okay? I'm going to call them and let them know we're coming with you and let them know if we're calling a sepsis alert just based on your criteria, your presentation, and everything that's going on in your life right now. Um, and we will just keep it moving, okay? And since then has had an increase in swelling and difficulty swallowing. So he's fine and his airway is protected at the moment, but it is, it is pretty swollen, so just a heads up. Great, thanks. Bye. Are you in any pain or discomfort? Your throat's killing you. I'm just gonna take one more good look in your airway. I need a light. Alright. You're just nice and swollen, not super red. Have you been sucking on those throat lozenges pretty significantly? Yeah. Does that hurt when I'm touching anywhere? No. Yeah, those are nice and swollen. And you're swollen even under here on your lymph node, under your throat, or under your jawline. All right, I'm gonna start disconnecting you from some of these things here, okay? And we'll tug on this, one, two, three. Yeah. yeah, I do a really good job of making spaghetti out of all my cords. I can take your pole socks off, thank you. All right, once we stop, I'm gonna get one good listen to your throat and lungs one more time, okay? It's just kind of hard to hear those lung sounds and everything when you're in a moving ambulance, I'm sure, as you know. All right, let's clamp this guy down. All right. We're gonna have you sign right in here. This is just the transport. Uh, signature, so it's your hip release. Okay. So listen right here. Just breathe normal. Okay. Sounds good. Engine 42, Mad 42, Medical Assistance. Alright, going on a two year old male that is choking on some food. Sounds like his airway is mostly clear because he's it says he's coughing and he's already vomited. So most likely he's spit the food up or coughed it up. But we'll be preparing for the worst and hope for the best. There you are. Thank you. Grab our pediatric kit. Grab this and we'll let the engine guys grab the bed. The respirator at 22, sitting at 98% on room air. Um, she is acting, she's saying that he's acting age appropriately. She's fine with following up with the primary care physician does not believe he needs to be seen at the emergency room today. So he, so we were in dinner, he bit his tongue really hard. He was eating some salad, because he's a good boy. Um, and he bit his tongue really hard, and while he was like crying with the pain, I think he must have sucked in um, some food in his throat. It definitely sounded like he had some food that went into his throat and it was uncomfortable, but he could still breathe. I think about, after about 25 minutes, he was going back and forth, coughing, not coughing, but his coughing was pretty bad. And after about 25 minutes, he threw up a little bit with a cough. And then I was like, okay, well maybe that did it. I think after that, I started looking on the internet to see at what point there are, like what are the symptoms that I need to actually be concerned because he had thrown up. That seemed like that might be like a line where it's like, no, you go to the emergency room. Um, but he was kind of, he was coughing and kind of getting worse and he was starting to get worried. Like he was looking for me and wanted to be held. So then I started to get worried and then, and then I just, I started to get nervous. Like I was like, do I call my partner? Do I call the doctor? Do I call my neighbor? Does she come over and watch with me? Is she going to come over and be like, you should have already called 911. And then at that point we were washing him off at the sink and he started to cough even more. There were several episodes in there in which he, there was a lot of wheezing and he sounded really bad and I was watching him and then it would pass. So anyway, when he was at the sink and I had my phone in my hand and I'm trying to decide who I'm going to call and he threw up probably everything in his stomach 
and that's the point at which I called 911. Yes. I was really glad that you guys were on your way because, like I said, I had called last year when Will was having a really terrible coughing fit and I was worried that he was having like an asthma attack, which I'd never experienced before with a child. Um, so I knew you guys would come and take his oxygen level and check him out and give me that peace of mind that you guys were already on the way. What I would do different was would have gotten CPR certified before I had children because after I had them, it, it was very hard to take that time except when you're in a situation like this and then I'm like wow I wish that I were CPR certified right now so that I would know at what point I'm supposed to call. No, it was really easy and comforting and it's like I was filled with embarrassment once there were like 10 professionals in my house and my, my kid was fine at that point um, but at, at the time that he was throwing up I was like I don't know what, if this is going to turn up or down. This is now the third time that paramedics have shown up and you guys have always been very comforting and like I'm very glad you called even though there wasn't an emergency. I'm really glad um, you know that you called. So it's very easy, it's very comforting, it's really um, yeah and if you yeah that, that would be my best advice. Like if you feel like you need to call 911 then you probably should because you should trust your instincts like that. And also my goggles are like Snow protectors on my eyes. Yep, you got it. Exactly. <clears throat> you wear the you wear the snow protectors, and we wear the smoke protectors. That's what these are for. Big goggles. Yeah. You want to see it on my face? Uh -huh. It looks kind. Of, it looks a little different than what it usually looks like. So it keeps like me nice breathe. and safe. And then this hooks up to our air packs, so I breathe fresh air, even when I'm inside trying to rescue you. Whoa. Wow! Isn't that pretty cool? So I look a little different, I might look a little scary, but it's the same person underneath the mask. Oh, we're just gonna come help you out. Hi. It's like a winter coat, like we have one right now, but just way bigger. You wanna try it? All right. So this arm's gonna go over here, through that sleeve, way up there. There you go. Yep. And then this one's gonna go through this sleeve, over here, there you go. So we can lift you up into it, see if that'll help. There you go. Oh man, that's a big jacket. <laughs> it's a little big on you, huh? Still warm? <laughs> that's where we wear to go inside houses if you ever need help. So it keeps us safe from the fire and the smoke and everything and it lets us come find you. Yeah, you have any you. questions about it? I, so I have been coughing pretty hard. I, and yeah. looks like he swallowed, looks like he inhaled a carrot. Yeah, that's what it sounded like, he inhaled a carrot. Yeah. Looks like he's better now though. You're being a good big brother looking out for him, so that's good. That's yeah. right, you're in an ambulance. Alright, what do you say, Will? Okay. You're welcome, buddy. Nice okay. job.